Uh, joined now exclusively by uh, the former CEO of HP, she also is the former CEO of eBay. You may remember her. She occasionally would come on and join us pretty much every single quarter during their time at uh, HP. Meg Whitman, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks uh, for having me, David. Very different uh, world for you now. You actually yeah. are based in Los Angeles. Yes, we have moved to Los Angeles. And you are running a company that is getting set less than a year from now to produce short-form content at the highest end of production value for essentially people's wireless devices, more likely their phone than yes. not. Uh, why is this going to be something that actually is something people, and it is called Quibi, Yes. Uh, that people want. Well, first, I, should, I think you probably figured out Quibi is a contraction of Quick Bytes, which is what we call this short-form content. And what we know is people are increasingly watching video on their mobile 60 minutes a day, up from just six minutes in 2012, and that's because there's better bandwidth and more content. And we're going to go after a white space, which is very high-quality content in this short form, bringing together the best of Hollywood and the best of Silicon Valley. And it's an on-the-go use case. You know, every morning you leave your house with a little television in your pocket, and you have all these in-between moments, like when you were waiting for me to show up. <laughs> right. And uh, a chance to watch, you know, six or eight minutes of, of something great. So we've got incredible content coming, and we're doing some real innovation on the technology side. You know, side. nobody doubts your ability to execute and or Mr. Katzenberg, of course, your partner in this as well. Uh, but people do wonder in terms of short form. I mean, you describe the way people would consume the content. I take the subway every day in New York. People are watching their videos there, but it's yeah. a half hour show or an hour show. Why do you believe that it is something at a shorter form will appeal to people who already seem happy to be watching in shorter yeah. bursts longer things? Yeah. Well, I think it's real innovation. Do you remember when HBO launched? They said, "We're it's not TV, it's HBO. And at the height of advertiser-supported TV, and they created an incredible premium viewing experience. People love YouTube. We love YouTube. It's amazing what that company has done. You know, Snapchat, Facebook Watch, they're all doing really Instagram interesting. Instagram is Instagram another Instagram potential competitor. doing thing, great things, yeah. but we're doing at a different quality level. And we will tell long-form stories, but in 10-minute chapters. My best analogy for you is the Da Vinci Code. 464 pages, 105 chapters. Each chapter is five pages long. Because Dan Brown said, if you got five minutes, I want you to read one chapter. If you got ten minutes, I want you to read two chapters. And people don't have these big blocks of time. And to create story arcs, around great stories um, that is for on-the-go viewing. We think there's an audience. And it's for millennials, 25 to 35-year-olds. Right. Probably get seven years younger and seven years and, older as well. And you haven't yet settled on a pricing metric. Yes, we have. Okay, what is yeah, it? Yeah, it's um, $5 a month, actually probably right. $4.99 a month ad-supported and $7.99 a month ad-free. Okay. Um, the creators you're going to yeah. for this content. Yeah. I mean, it's a good time, by the way, I would assume, in this town and others to be a creator of content, it's, given it's how many a, people are... It's an amazing time here in Is Hollywood. it ending up being more expensive than you'd anticipated? I know that many people are buying in, and you have a lot of support yeah. of studios as well, but is the prospect of creating this content even more expensive than you might have anticipated, given the demand for these yeah. people who created it? It's not more expensive than we anticipated in the business case, because we knew there was a renaissance going on in Hollywood. And, you know, every day there's a new entrant in this, you know, very high-end, long-form OTT services. So we're competing. But content creators really like this, because they know the cell phone, the smartphone, is the next big screen. If we're right, movies, television, Quibi. And so they want to develop um, for this device, and we've made it an attractive proposition for them. So we had to, we, first we started, we had to pitch and explain what we were doing, and now much of Hollywood is coming to us with, I, which, with ideas, which is, of course, what you want. Right, of course, you want to hit is what I would think you want, something that really is well, going to get do. word of mouth going yes. and, and start to create a sense that Certainly. this is something people want. Certainly we need a hit. That's what we call our lighthouses. But, you know, part of what we are excited about at Quibi is we want to create a daily consumption habit, and we're going to launch something called Daily Essentials, which will be, you know, in six and a half to eight minutes, a wrap-up of news, a wrap-up of sports, a wrap-up of um, music news, celebrity news, gaming news. And if we can get you to be interested in three of those a day that you really like, that you depend on, that's where you get a lot of your news, right. then I think that creates the daily consumption habit and the other kinds of content build on top of that. We are in a, a world now where there is a proliferation of services uh, that stream. Uh, yes. Disney Plus, I was at yes. here a few weeks ago yeah. interviewing Mr. Iger as they introduced their service yeah. at six ninety nine. What do you think the willingness is of the consumers to have all of these different services, including your own yeah. at 4 dollars Well, I think in the end there won't be quite as many as there are today. Think of every industry, you know, think of the car industry at the turn of the last century. I mean, one, there was like 100 car companies at one point, and, you know, now there's three or four. 
But I think there's a lot of different business models. I mean, I think Disney was remarkable in its announcement. Why did you think it was remarkable? Well, I mean, they have such a library of content. It was beautifully produced. And I mean, look at what, you know, Endgame did this weekend. I mean, it was historic. Um, but we're quite a different use case. You know, a lot of these services are at night. You know, you come home from work, you want to invest an hour, an hour and a half on the weekends. We think our use case is Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And so you believe that there will be a willingness amongst how, how are you going to know when it's working? How are you going to, how are you going to define yeah. success so or at it, least know you're on the road? Yeah. To it? So really the key metric for us at the end of the day is paid net subscribers. How many people try, how many people um, actually subscribe, and then how many people stay? It's a, a classic subscription business. And so I think we'll know at the end of the first quarter, are we on track for our base case or our goal case? You know, what are people saying about the service? By the way, it's so wonderful because for the first time in 20 years, and you will appreciate this, I do not have a legacy platform. I get to build the technology platform from scratch so we can instrument it and, and um, develop it in a way that we would never have been able to do. And so the technology innovation and making video look great on your phone is very much part of what we're doing. But in the end, paid net subscribers. Right. So we got a little while yet before I can sit here and yes. ask you if you're working yes. or not, given it's not going to launch till April of next year. You know, it's funny, when you sat down, you, we were talking very briefly, and you said, the work now is more akin to what you did at eBay yes. than it certainly is to HP. Yeah. Why yeah. is that? Well, it's a startup. eBay, I joined, remember, when there were 30 people and $4 million in revenues. This, was, this is a pre-revenue company. I was employee number one in March a year ago. But we now have 100 people. And it's, you know, we're building something. And um, that's much more akin to eBay. I loved my time at HP, but that was, you know, really reinventing an American icon. And you might recall, I mean, when I joined, it was $129 billion in well, revenue and, and 325,000. How many employees? Well, 320, 325,000 plus 80,000 contractors. Right. So it's, it's actually so much easier in many ways. I can manage by walking around. I know every person that works at Quibi. It won't be like that forever. You enjoy but that. You're enjoying that fun. as well. It's you know, it's funny. Fun. Devin Wenig was sitting here not long ago talking about eBay, and we were having some of the same conversations yes. that you and I may have had 15, 18 years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Devin's a good friend. When you look at the platform eBay is today, is it what you'd expected it might be? Are you surprised that there are still sort of debates about re-energizing it and the difference between you know, large sellers and medium and small size businesses? It's, you have to remember, I've been gone from eBay for 10 years. I know. It's hard I to know. imagine. So, you know, and in, in the life of that company, that's, you know, a third of it, basically, more yeah. than that. And um, so, but think about how e-commerce has changed. When I was at eBay in the early days, we were explaining to people what the internet was. Do you remember our first ad was www.ebay.com? It's on the internet. <laughs> and so e-commerce has changed. And the world is changing at a breakneck speed. I've never seen anything like this. It yep. is. Well, what you happens talk about that all the time. And you talked about it during our many interviews when you were running HP in terms of the rate of change increasing and therefore the need to do certain things. It's just amazing. Do you worry about it when it comes to Quibi? That sure. there will be something that outruns you? Absolutely. Even now, given the proliferation? I mean, every day there's a new announcement. Every day there's a new announcement. There's new technology. But I think startups in some ways have an advantage because we can move fast. We can pivot. We see what needs to be done. And um, and we have a you know we have a singular mission, and uh, so we just have to stay on our path, which is this you know on the go use case, very high quality, short form content that fits into people's lives with a, a unique technology platform. And I'm pretty optimistic, as you know, I could have done a lot of different things. Yes, you could. And I decided that uh, that this would be. I thought it was a fantastic idea, and I thought it would be you know very successful. Well, I'm glad that we got a chance to catch up. Thank you.